Support for Sports Page is provided by Parker Supermarket and Pharmacy in Warrensburg. Parker's works hard to supply grocery staples and spices to cook Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, and Thai cuisine. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience for everyone. By First Central Bank, full service banking from seven locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. First Central Bank, a residential mortgage lender, member FDIC. And by Union Station, Crossroads to Technology, a one-stop shopping source for technology needs. Campus compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus, on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads to Technology. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics. Coming up next on the Central Missouri Sports Page, Mules basketball coach Kim Anderson stops by to talk about his team's six-game winning streak that has them atop the MIAA standings. Mules wrestling coach Justin Ensign also joins us this week to talk about his squad as they begin the stretch run towards NCAA regionals. In our Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlights, we'll meet Mules junior guard Widget Washington and Mules 174-pound senior grappler Willie Russell. So stick around, we've got an action-packed hour of Mules and Jenny Sports coming your way next here on the Central Missouri Sports Page. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for watching the University of Central Missouri Sports Page. I'm Sean Jones, and joining me to tip off the show is Mules basketball coach, Kim Anderson. Coach A, welcome back. Sean, good to be back today. Another good week for Mules basketball. Let's break it down. Six wins in a row for your team. Three of those against nationally ranked opponents. The last three on the road, and all six against MIAA opponents. Your team now finds yourselves in first place in the MIAA. Talk about the keys to this success. Well, I think you know a big key is is we've done a pretty good job defensively. Our guys have uh, we've mixed up some different types of defenses, but lately we've played mostly man to man. And I think our big guys have have gotten better as the as the season's gone on. Our guards have have I think improved. You know, the one area that we've had trouble with is guard and dribble penetration. Um, I thought last night we did a better job of that against Missouri Southern. We didn't against uh, Southwest Baptist. And then our big guys collectively, the, the three guys who've been playing, have uh, amassed some pretty good numbers, you know, but basically almost double-double between the three of them. And so uh, I think that's been a huge key. And then offensively, uh, and we've talked about this a lot, is for the most part we've done a better job of making the other team guard us. We haven't taken too many quick shots. Um, you know, we've taken better shots. Uh, ironically, uh, you know, we lead the MIAA now in three-point field goal percentage. And, uh, you know, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, we weren't even in the top five probably. And, and that's not that we weren't bad shooters. It's just now we're taking better shots. So, you know, and, and then chemistry and playing together and, and guys understanding their roles. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, and of course, it's a long season, and we've now played 12 of 20 MIAA games, and you know, they gripe and talk about how tough it is in the Big 12 to play the round robin at 18. Last year, we played 22 league games, and uh, obviously this year, it's down to 20 with one team leaving the league, but the bottom line is, back on December 31st, I think we were talking off the record that I just hope this team can make the MIAA tournament, be one of the eight out of the 11 to make Kansas City. Now, less than a month later, your basketball team leads the best conference in Division II. And it's a credit to the 10 guys who were new to this program and still trying to figure out what they needed to do to help this team in that loss to Washburn on New Year's Eve and where those guys have come and how they figured out what they can do to help Mules basketball. It's really been something to behold. Well, I think it comes down to uh, familiarity and, and definement. You know, that's something that we talk about. Every guy that comes into this program, every guy that came into this program this year was a scorer. 
at, at their previous institution. You know, it goes, you know, Widget averaged 26 points a game in junior college, and, uh, you know, Matt Webb was in the teens, and, and Alex Dean, 17, Yavario, 17, and, uh, you know, you can just go down the line. You add, you add those numbers up, you get 114. Well, that doesn't work in the MIAA. You're not going to get that many points. So it, it came down to guys um, buying into things, I, I think, and realizing that in order for us to be successful, uh, everyone has to play a role or uh, uh, they'll get a certain number of shots at this certain area of the floor, this is where we're most successful. And that took a while. And, you know, I, I hesitate to say it's done because it's not. It's an ongoing process and something we have to work on every day. Let's go back and talk about first on Saturday night, you were in Bolivar to take on Southwest Baptist, a very good team, particularly at home, like most teams are in the MIAA. But you see the final there, 91-80. Some hot shooting and big free throws down the stretch. And as you can see, a huge game from Dominique Long. Well, he really stepped up for us. We needed him to do that. We were we were fortunate, uh, you know, down the stretch, we widened it out a little bit and we made, I think, 14 free throws in a row there in the last four or five minutes. And, uh, you know, we've had a couple of games this year where we've not missed 14 in a row, but it certainly felt like it. So I thought our guys stepped up and, and, and made the plays. You know, we did a poor job on Ryan Doherty, scored 35 points, but we did a great job on everybody else. And, uh, you know, we didn't do a great job guarding dribble penetration, but we were able to uh, somewhat contain their three-point shooters, which is their, their, one of their strengths. Um, when we played them here in, uh, back in December, uh, they're big guys. Memnon, I remember, had 25 points, and he only had five the other night. So, you know, maybe that's a sign of improvement by our bigger guys that we were able to contain him and keep him from having a big night, too. Well, let's move forward now. The biggest test of the season took place on Wednesday night at the Leggett and Platt Center in Joplin. Southern, the MIAA champs from a year ago, the pick to win the league again this year. They clearly have the two best players in the league. There's Tolman at 6'11 in center circle and Adams number 13, 21 and 19 points a game respectively. Southern had won 14 games in a row at home. All of those things, but you both were tied at 8-3 in the league entering this one last night. And your guys showed, showed tremendous poise played some great defense and again free throws and big shots down the stretch. Well guys made big play. We started off poorly. I, I thought at the beginning of the game Southern was playing at another level and I'll be very candid I was worried that they may may uh, take this thing up to 15 or 20 and they did take it to 12 but then we we uh, got things under control a little bit. We had some guys make some big baskets. Uh, our defense settled in and we were able to uh, uh, you know get some points and get back even at halftime. And we're watching highlights from the Leggett and Platt Center. You see it there again, a tough start to this game. 22 to 14 Southern leading, and again, it gets to a 12-point lead. You know, in retrospect, Kim, as we look at this, I'm not sure that wasn't the best thing for this Mules team because it got it was easy for Southern to start the game, and then your guys continued, to their credit, to battle and grind and fight back, and Southern was never able to pick up that intensity again that allowed them to, to build that 12-point lead early. Well, I think it was the best thing for us, and I think it was the worst thing for them. Uh, I've been on the other side of that where you, get, you start off, you got to... Uh, a lot of uh, enthusiasm and energy and and uh, things are going well and then all of a sudden they uh, you know the, the other team knocks down a couple of baskets and you're back in it and you're like oh man you know we thought we had this one and we didn't again we're looking at highlights and again it's a balanced effort from your team in this contest there's Dominique Long a good step through move to the basket and uh, Dominique had a huge game and he's just been getting better and better and then there's DJ Slifer whenever you need a big three he seems to hit one for you. Well they've, those guys have done a great job and, and DJ has, has stepped up and made big shots for us. Dominique has become a very uh, versatile player. He can play uh, some on the inside, he can step out and shoot the three and uh, but the guy that kept us in this game was Boo Hunter. He kept us in in the first half and allowed us to be tied at halftime and and uh, make some adjustments in the second half and then ultimately hang on at the end. 44 all at the half and what a great start to the second half right here as you take it right to 611 Keen Toman and Matt Webb gets a bucket. Well we challenged our bigs at half. We said hey you guys have, you can't back away you got to take it at them and Matt I thought responded very well as did Will and Alex all three of them. Great pass. pass. Great backdoor pass. We talked about that for two days leading up to the game. They do a great job of guarding 
and uh, I thought we did a great job on that back door. And there was Lance Beck with your point guard. 15 points, 7 assists, 0 turnovers, and 6 of 6 at the foul. Well, he's gotten better and better, and he's gotten better because he started to understand where his strengths are and what he needs to avoid. And, uh, you know, he's, his field goal percentage now is, is over 50%, which is pretty good for a point guard. He's been very selective in his shots. Midway mark again, second half meals with the three-point lead. We're going to continue to see this thing improve as there's a good hook shot by Matt Webb. Uh, the other thing you did that, you know, doesn't show up a lot in the highlights, obviously you shared the ball, got good looks, Donald hits a big three there, but defensively you forced a lot of turnovers and turned those turnovers into points. There was a great pass there by Matt and Damo hit the big three before that. Yeah, they don't normally turn it over quite that much and they turned it over 22 times uh, last night and, and 15 in the second half, which was a, obviously a key stat. That and they were two for 16 from three and I thought we did a great job of guarding them on the perimeter from the three. There's a big three there. Lance doesn't normally shoot very many threes, but he was set and uh, felt good and that, that certainly was a big shot for us. Really handled the pressure well, you can see it right here. Yeah, we did. Great uh, great pass, great play by Matt. Uh, under control, uh, you know, their pressure didn't bother us as much as uh, as it maybe it had in, uh, in past years and, and hopefully that's a sign of uh, maturity for these guys. There you see the final numbers. The Mules upset 14th ranked Missouri Southern in Joplin, 81-68. The win was the sixth straight for the Mules. They're third over a nationally ranked opponent in the win streak, and it snapped Southern's 14-game home court win streak, which was the fourth longest in Division II. Lance Beck with 15 points, seven assists, zero turnovers. Dominique Long, 15 points as well. The Mules now 13-4. and four. They are 9-3 and three in the MIAA, and that puts the Mules in a two-way tie for first in the conference. It was a big night last night. Northwest went to Topeka, knocked off Washburn. Washburn was a half game out of first entering last night. Now look where Washburn is in the standings. Now that shows you, though, how close those top six spots are in the league. It's great the Mules are up there right now. A two-way tie for first, but Southern's right there. Pitt State is lurking, of course, coming in here on Saturday. Fort Hayes and Washburn right there as well, Coach. So uh, an awful lot still to be decided, especially first through sixth. That's amazing. Well, there's six, you know, six teams there within a game or game and a half. So, uh, you know, every game now is important. Uh, in particular, uh, you know, the great thing for us, we lost a couple home games early and against good teams, Southern being one of them, Washburn being one of them. And, you know, in order to get back into this thing, you have to go on the road and, and we say steal them, and uh, certainly last night was, was one that we had to go and get. If we are going to be a factor in the league race, uh, you know, we still have, uh, what, I think five road games in a row coming up here, five conference games in a row uh, on the road after we play these two home games. So got, got a lot of work ahead of us. But I think our guys, uh, you know, they feel good about being where they're at, and, and uh We've played well on the road, so hopefully that will continue. And you've got to take advantage of this two-game homestand, which begins on Saturday as uh, Pittsburgh State comes to town. 1-30, 3-30, doubleheader for the Mules and Jenny. So if each one six straight, first time that's happened in MIAA doubleheader since 1997. And, of course, this is your 10th season, Coach A, as the Mules basketball coach. We're celebrating that with a Mules basketball reunion this weekend. I think right now about 50 guys or so have RSVP'd that are coming back. We're going to have a reception for them at 6 o'clock Friday night at the Walton Clubhouse with Mule Train donors invited. Alumni game at 11 a.m. on Saturday. That ought to be just interesting, if nothing else, to see how some of the guys have aged and handled that. And then, of course, a Military Appreciation Day and Youth Day. But uh, I know it'll be a special weekend for you. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I, you know, the response has been good. Uh, you know, several of our guys obviously couldn't make it. Some of them are still playing overseas, and uh, you know, I've heard from uh, from my kicks, Sanjay Watts, Zach Wright, those guys, Eshawn Henderson, uh, you know, Alonzo Brooks. All those guys are still playing, so they couldn't make it. But I think we're going to have a great turnout. Uh, excited to see, gosh, Derek Weber. Uh, Alex Mooseman's going to be back, Corey Brown, uh, Theo Jones, um, I think Tremaine Llewellyn, uh, you know, gosh, all the way back to Brian Rhodes and, and Tad Marquez and, and Anders Snyder. Uh, it's really neat. It's really neat. And, and, and you know, for me, um, it'll be very special, but it, it's even more exciting because, you know, we were able to include 
everyone who's ever played here. And hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get the opportunity to meet some of those people and visit with them because there's a lot of players coming back that I didn't coach, and uh, but that I grew up, I knew about, or had seen play as I was growing up, or have heard about them since then. And and uh, I got a, a letter today from uh, Brigadier General Arnold Bray, who uh, uh, is somewhere. We, I don't know where he is, but he, he's not going to be here Saturday. But he certainly sent along his best wishes. And so, you know, it's, it'll be a neat a neat weekend. And I think uh, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to having our guys. Uh, mingle with the guys who who have had a large part in building this program. And oh, by the way, a monster basketball game at 3:30 on Saturday. You're eight and three in the league, or excuse me, nine and three in the league. And then you've got Pitt State, maybe kind of quietly, eight and four in the conference. They're just one game behind you. Well, and we went down there in December and stole one because we played poorly. They played poorly. We both played bad. It was the game right before Christmas. Uh, you know, we got behind in the first half. Uh, it just got uh, it was just an ugly game in the second half so they have played uh, Kevin Muff's done a great job they they've you're right they it's been quiet but it's they're right there they're one game behind they've beaten some good teams and it's going to be a um, a very very physical game um, you know they they like to uh, get after it they'll, they'll get after you so uh, it'll be a tough game uh, Saturday. So that's Saturday. Now let's look ahead to Wednesday. Emporia State comes in. There's one I know you're looking forward to, or you will after Saturday, because if there is a game that you feel like you let slip through your hands uh, in what's been a good season, it was going to Emporia State and losing earlier this year. So a chance, if you will, to exact some revenge coming up on Wednesday. Well, it was kind of a, a, a game like last night's game, only it was, it was us. We got off to a great start at Emporia, uh, probably relaxed a little bit, and uh, they did a great job. They came back. Uh, we went to overtime, and they beat us. And, um, you know, got a new coach, and, and uh, I know our guys are uh, – that's one that they're disappointed they – I don't want to say gave away because Emporia played well, but that's one they're, I think they're looking forward to, to uh, playing uh, next week after we play Pitt State. <laughs> well, I'm excited to be at home. We're bringing a six-game win streak home, uh, first place in the league. Hopefully a lot of folks will come out. Love to have you at the multi-Saturday for the 133-30 doubleheader. Uh, the Pitt State women are 17-2. and two. The Pitt State men are one game behind the mules here in first in the league and again it's military appreciation day it's youth day and it's mules basketball reunion weekend if you've been a fan of mules basketball over the course of the last many years uh, come back because you're going to see guys that played during your favorite era perhaps and a lot of guys that played for coach a in his 10 years i'm really looking forward to it hope you are as well coach a thanks for the visit we'll see you next week okay thanks jonesy coming up next here on sports page we'll get to know mules junior guard widget washington that's next here on camo stv missouri PBS. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. We're getting them ready. I'm ready to read. Ready to try. I'm ready. Estoy listo. Ready for life. I'm ready to speak. It's what we do every day. I'm ready to dream. With the books we provide, the workshops we sponsor. At KMOS TV 6, we're committed to making sure every child in Central Missouri is ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to learn. I choose to finish what I start. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose red to make my family proud. I choose red because I can take classes that work around my schedule. I choose red to advance my career. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree, advance your career, and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Watch season to season outdoors starting in January only on KMOS TV Channel 6. Can I get a grunt? <laughs> <laughs>
And welcome back to the Central Missouri Sports Page here on KMOS TV. In this segment, we shine the student athlete spotlight on Mule's junior guard, Widget Washington. I started playing basketball at the age of four. My uncle, he was like he a big, uh, he was a coach back in Kansas City. So like he just always wanted me to get involved. So I wouldn't be in the house all the time. So at first I used to play flag football. So I just tried basketball, and it's something that I like more than football. So now it's basketball. My uh, recruiting process here, it, it came a little late because at first I was supposed to go Division One, but like slipped up on a few classes. So. Coach Luce knew my uncle that was like a big coach in Kansas City, so he just, they connected and I wanted to stay close to home, so I picked him and it's one of the top D2s in the country, so it wasn't a bad choice. The team come to more family with me because like I bring the energy off the bench, I bring the excitement, and I, I bring all, like I work hard on the defense end and the offense end, and I bring the intensity each and every day at practice and on the, uh, to the game. The relationship with me and coaches is like, like they my fathers or my uncles or anything. Like I can go talk to them about anything, go talk to them anytime, call them anytime. I text them a lot. We just always keep in touch and on and off the court. Oh yeah, with the players, we, we hang around, we play games every day. We go watch movies, we go out together. We, we hang around each other 24-7. Anything we're doing off the court, we together as a family. My playing style, like, I like to get up and down because I'm, I'm fast. I like use my quickness on, on the defense end so I can go get a steal or go get a layup or when we get a rebound, kick it out to me and I push to, push to get an easy bucket. Typical practice for us is going hard, up tempo, loud, everybody talking. A lot of excitement, a lot of excitement. From the coaches to the players to the, to the managers, it's just excitement the whole time at practice. Uh, the dance can't be came because I'm always off the court joking, playing around, dancing. So the team was like, since uh, since Reggie, because Reggie used to do it, since Reggie got hurt, they was like, you got to step up. you always dancing off the court. Now it's time to dance in front of everybody and get this hype in the circle. So I just get in there and do my thing. Yeah, I, I, I consider myself a leader because the team follow me, even though I don't start, but they know I can, I get them in the right position to score. And then I own it off the court. I push them in a classroom or I push them on the court. And they just follow me. Our, our strengths and weaknesses is like, when we seem to rush things, when we rush things, that's one of our biggest weaknesses. It, it hurts us a lot. But when we more patient and calm down and pass the ball, get each other, everybody involved, it, it just, we work so much together. Oh, it's, it's, it's more like in between both. Like if we get it off a rebound and we can run, we can run. But if we got it in a half court session, it's more about being patient and, and getting the best shot for the team and for one of your teammates. What I do when I'm not playing basketball, more hanging with my teammates, relaxing, playing with my nephews. That's a, that's a big part. That's what I do almost like, every time I get a 10 chance to off, I go home and chill with my nephews and play with them all the time. They, they're a big part of my life. At the college, hopefully, if I if I go play overseas, after I'm done overseas, come back and uh, be an FBI agent. The opportunity the rest of the season going is, we got we got we got a bright future. If we keep playing the way we plan, playing together as a family, and, and going hard in practice and bringing it over to the games, we, we got a good chance to make it some noise. I like playing with the Mules because you know it bring it brings a lot out of you. It brings your character out. It just assignment place. The atmosphere here is great. The school is great, and the, my teammates is great, and my coaches is great. So it's just one of the best places I've played since I've been playing basketball. The Kansas City product averaged 26 points a game last year at Northeastern Colorado, but he's proved in his first season as a mule that he's much more than a scorer. As a matter of fact, his 4.8 assists per game are second in the MIAA, 
and he's shown his unselfishness with his willingness to be the Mule's sixth man. And that's been a big part of the chemistry which this team has developed over the course of the last month. And of course, that has vaulted them to six straight wins. And right now, they're in first place in the MIAA, heading into Saturday's showdown with a team right behind them, Pitt State. Again, that's 3.30 Saturday at the Multi. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll take a look at how all the Mules and Jennies winter sports teams performed this past week. And we'll hit the mats as we talk Mules wrestling with head coach Justin Ensign. All of that's on the way when Sports Page continues in just a moment. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Vosis to me means pride in my community, pride in myself, sense of self-esteem, self-worth, passion for our people, Latino contributions to American culture, all rolled into one, where Latino voices from all corners of America can be heard. I'm Edward James Olmos, and Voices is my source for Latino stories on BBS. I just like the surprise when I turn on the TV and there's an interesting program about history or about gardening or about quilting. So that's really a wonderful source for me, and that's why I like KMOS. It's my source. Stay tuned to KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. And once again, thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV. Coming up in just a moment, we'll talk Mules Wrestling with head coach Justin Inson. But first, let's look back at how all the Mules and Jennies performed this past week. And we just talked about what a great week it was for Mules basketball. Well, the Jennies basketball squad has won six straight games just like the Mules. It's the first time since 1997 the Jennies and the Mules have swept six straight MIAA doubleheaders. Last Saturday night, the Jens picked up a thrilling 61-60 win at SBU. The Jens led by 16 in the second half before SBU roared back to take a seven-point lead. With three minutes left, the Jens went on a 9-1 run and Nicole Cadell hit the game winner in the lane with 2.2 seconds left. Wednesday night, the Jens were in Joplin to battle Missouri Southern and once again, the Jennies were solid down the stretch and closing out a 73-66 win over Southern. Built a big lead, lost it, roared back in the end, won the ball game. Nicole Cadell scored 21 points. She went 13 of 14 at the free throw line. So the Jennies are now 14 and four and they are 8-4 and four and in the thick of things in the MIAA. Good start to the season indoor track and field wise for the Mules and Jennies. They earned eight NCAA provisional marks last Friday at the first event of the indoor season, the UCM Invitational. The Mules won the event, defeating Emporia State while the Jennies placed second. Kayla Meishkins qualified in two events and she was named the MIAA Field Athlete of the Week. And you see there the sixth ranked Jenny's bowling team finished in second at the Nebraska Big Red Invitational last weekend in Lincoln, actually finishing ahead of the Cornhuskers for the second consecutive week. Gabriella Mayfield was named to the all-tournament team with a 237.5 average. That's tops at the event. And the Mules wrestling team just wrapped up their home schedule and now their sights are set on getting ready for postseason competition. Joining us now to talk about his squad is head coach 
Justin Ensign. Coach Ensign, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, I know it's been a tumultuous season for Mules Wrestling. There have been some positives. There have been some negatives. Kind of hit on the big ones. Um, well, you know, it's been, hasn't been quite what we expected. We thought we had a pretty good group. And, uh, I mean, they're a great group of kids. It's just, you know, injuries and a couple problems here and there. And it's kind of made the season seem a little longer. But, you know, um, on the positive side, we got, you know, I think we still got some kids who can really, if we get everybody right, do some damage in the postseason. Uh, probably, you know, uh, headline that is our, one of our seniors, uh, Willie Russell, is putting together a real good senior year. Um, you know, he finished strong for his last year place in the regional, but he's really shown that he's hanging with the best. And now he's got to do some little things and try to get him, you know, over the hump. And, you know, he's hung in there close to a lot of ranked guys. And now just find a way to get that extra point or two and, and beating them. Um, and some other guys, uh, Nick Vitarisi, our transfer from University of Indiana, has put together a good season. Uh, he's had some injuries as of late, but I think we'll get him ready. And, and there's a few other guys. Uh, Eric Mateo's had a good season. Uh, he's battled some sickness recently. But again, uh, they're both you know ranked pretty high in the region. And, and that's what we're looking to do is get everybody healthy and try to post uh, put, put as many guys through as we can to the national tournament. You know, you mentioned the injuries. And I know you, just like your, your coaching brother, and you don't use it as an excuse. You say next man up. But let's face the reality. There are certain guys who are here on some scholarship money. That, that there's a reason for that. And when you lose those guys, that hurts. And then in wrestling, it's not like, for example, in basketball where you lose a guard, you bring another guard in they've got to fit the weight class yeah. and that may mean they have to wrestle up or they have to wrestle down and that can be a really big challenge yeah and it, it, it's tough to do at the college level there's only 10 weight classes so um you know it's, it's tough to ask somebody to go up a weight class or two and there's there's a bigger gap than in the high school levels um and it's you know and and it's been tough too we've you know i got backups and back the backups backups that are hurting <laughs> you know and it's you know we have some guys who are red shirting and it, you don't want to really pull a red shirt for one event or two events, you know, when the big picture is, you know, you take your short-term pain for your long-term game, as as, they, as all coaches like to say. So. You know, the other thing that, that you have done, though, which I think can help, um, is you've really challenged your guys. Uh, you know, if, as I look at your schedule, whether it's the Opens or the Duels, you're, you're facing some of the top teams in the country, and that includes Division One competition. I mean, you've really put your guys up against a rigorous schedule, which I know you're hoping will pay dividends when you get to regionals and hopefully nationals. Oh, you know, for sure. I, I think when we go walking out regional, our records may not be the best. Uh, our dual meet record for sure isn't as, as great as I but um, as these other teams, but I think when you you know that stuff does add up, or you know it seems a lot easier once we're there. Um, I mean, look, and if you look at our losses, you know we've lost to three or four or five uh, ranked Division two teams, uh, you know two uh, big uh, two Division one schools, one of which is a, a Big Ten school, Indiana. So I mean, yeah, we set that up, you know, as you know, hoping obviously we didn't think we'd be this thin with injuries, but you set it up hopefully to get those guys ready. And like I said, I think uh, once we get to the regional, if we get the right guys in there, it'll it will seem the competition won't see as big as you know as tough as what they've seen all year. So I think they'll hopefully get them ready for it. One thing that's been neat in the season is you've had an opportunity to wrestle at home. You've had a pretty big group of home events here, but of course you started with the UCM Open, which is a great event known nationally, I think, in the wrestling community, bringing guys from all over the country. And then you had, of course, the Dinker Open, which uh, honors Coach Dinker, the longtime Hall of Fame wrestling coach here. And good competition at that. The Dual Jamboree last week, which brings in some good teams, lets you wrestle several teams at home. And then Hannibal LaGrange, we'll look at some highlights in a moment. So uh, kind of in very different types of events, you've had the chance for your guys to compete at home. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure if you guys have been watching this program know how Coach Ursuline probably always said our toughest tournament of the year is the one we host at the beginning of the year and, and it's tough when you got a young group and they, they go out there and they're wrestling, you know, guys from Oklahoma State and Mizzou and and whoever first round and seeing ranked Division One guys out the gate, they don't they they'll maybe they'll think the whole college experience is like this and it's really really not and too the more you wrestle those guys, the less tough they seem. You know, the more experience you get. So yeah, it's that's been. Uh, it's nice. We these, these other events, they're great. You know, our Danker Open's a great chance for our, a lot. You know, late in the year, there aren't a whole lot of tournaments for your backups and your red shirts to get out there and compete. So that's great, and, and it brings in some different teams. And we really try with our dual jam really to get teams from all over the country. You know, um, our, our big thing is our. We're, you know, we have four super regions, and that's how we qualify for nationals. Well, the teams are so widespread. We have teams in Tennessee, Ohio. Ohio, uh, Arkansas, um, South, uh, North and South Carolina, um, and next year, you know, might change again, you know, because we have um, Nebraska Kearney and, and some others joining the conference, so that that's spreads us out, so I try to make that event so nice so we can bring in all these teams from and get a chance to see them before the postseason and see what they're about. 
Well, let's uh, go back now and look at the final home event of the season. It was uh, the Mules and Hannibal LaGrange. It was on Tuesday night at the Multi. First of all, Senior Night, and a great way to honor uh, some guys who have given a lot to your program. Yeah, it, it was real good. You know, we had four seniors on, and all of them got a chance to go out there and win. And two of them had four fits. But, you know, a win's a win, and it's, it's nice for them in, to get a win in front of the home crowd and, you know, win the dual meet in front of the home crowd. You know, last year we lost on senior night, and it wasn't what we expected. So this year was good for our, you know, for, to honor our seniors and give them a chance to get their hand raised one more time in front of the home crowd. Again, it was Tuesday night at the Multi, the Mules and Hannibal LaGrange. We're looking at the highlights here. From a coach's perspective, what were the, the highlights? other than the, the ultimate, the victory that you took away from this? Um, you know, I think still out the gate, um, you know, there were a couple forfeits early that they had. And, uh, you know, our first actual match at 149, Scott Newman, a senior, went out there and he got on that guy early and, and really started putting a lot of points on the board. So it kind of got everything rolling for us as a team. Um, so I thought that was a big one. And then, um, you know, we, we lost some tough battles in the mix there, but, uh, you know, Willie Russell stepped up and, you know, he didn't put together his best match, but he found a way to win. Um, and here, you know, these highlights here, you got Derek Sanders, just a freshman for us. Uh, some we expect a lot of put together a nice performance. Um, here, uh, Ty Balti, this is an exhibition match, but it was his first career win, which is nice because, you know, he's a freshman. He puts, he puts a lot of hard work in there. He, he works harder than just about anybody on our team. And it's nice from this late in the year, you know, he kind of got thrown to the fire being our starter. But it's nice for him to go out and get a win finally. We're going to see in a moment when this match is over and you win, you see just some true emotion on Balti's face. And to me, it's what the uh, student athlete experience is all about. Here's a young man who's you know, worked extremely hard. And he, you know, his goal, obviously, you got to start with the first one, and that's get a college win. He did it. And you're going to see it here in a moment when he gets this win. The look on his face is just worth a million bucks. Yeah, yeah. And I, hopefully, it takes a lot of pressure off him because he's had a lot of close ones. And, and we've asked him to go out and wrestle some real tough kids you know he's been our starter in pretty much every duel and you know you can see there's our, our whole bench is fired up everyone's excited for him and and, I, and it, they're, they cool you know nobody else deserves as much as he does he puts all you know works hard just as much as anybody and you can see the emotion he's going to come over and talk to your coaching staff and uh, really really a nice moment there so a lot of good things happening in this event in terms of exhibitions you know again not counting in the scoring but uh, you line up four exhibitions you win all four yeah, we have three or four actually. Three or four. But, but yeah, it was nice for our extra guys and you get some good chance to get some matches, you know. Especially these guys put a lot of work in the room and they don't really get, you know, they're always getting the competition. And uh, so it's nice to, I try to give them as many chances as I can for our starters and, and our, you know, the, you know, to watch these guys compete because as they're watching, you know, our starters compete, it's not always fun, you know. And I, and I've always you know, believed that the sport's not called practice, it's called wrestling. So let's try, let's try to get these guys as many matches and experiences as they can. I think it's got to be different. You tell me. You've wrestled, you've coached, but you know, in an open, the technique's the same. When you're out there competing, it should be the same. But there's something different about, hey, this is the one match going on. It's in the center of the arena. Everybody's watching. There's got to be a different feeling almost or a different pressure knowing that you're the show and yeah. everybody's watching you. Yeah, that's for that's for sure, and I think that's one thing. Growing up, I like the sport so much because it is just you, and you know, some people like the crowd. They like to put on a show, and they, you know, it's it's big for it's big that way, and it really brings out the individual aspect. And dual meets are great on a team aspect, as you know, you can sit there on your bench and point things out to your team, and really kind of coach your team as the duel's going on. Where at open tournaments, yeah. you're all over the place, and there's so much going on and you're lucky if you catch some of those kids wrestle throughout the day because there's you have three four guys wrestling at once so like i said i'm real big in the dual meets i like how you can sit there and you know kind of coach your bench and get everybody involved and go you know even if it's a mistake or something they're doing right you can point it out to your rest of your team and they can draw on that experience and they can you know and they can learn from that and we can learn from that as a group better than as in uh, open Justin Ensign uh, visiting with us again. Mules beat Hannibal Grange 26 to 15. You know, it's hard to believe, but it's only about a month or so until regionals and then nationals. And your sport, I think, kind of like track and field, you, you want to compete well throughout the year, there's no question. But ultimately, you're judged and everything's based on how you do at regionals and how many guys you get through to nationals. How, how do you uh, handle this last month, I guess, heading up to the most important couple weeks of the season? Oh, the first the first thing we got to do is got to get everybody healthy. And we have a couple guys who may or may not be out for the year, and that's frustrating, but they got to do everything they can to come back. And the guys who are nicked up is get healthy. Um, and, you know, we got a tough schedule coming up. We got uh, 
a dual f to, uh, on Friday here, and then we got uh, two next week. So it'll be tough to get, you know get through that part, and then we have a little bit of a layoff. So it'll be nice to get get a chance, get some guys rested, and then we can you know spend more time focusing on technique and instead of making sure we're ready for each individual duel. Um, and then you know we have two weeks between our last competition and the regional, so that's really where a chance to get guys and the guys who've been out get them in better shape. The guys you know. Um, and just get everybody peaking in general, if, even if they've been in or been out. So that's kind of, you know, everybody wants to peak for those big events. And it, and it kind of does stink sometimes where you, know, you have a good dual meet season or you have a good year and you, you have a bad day in the national tournament or the regional tournament and people forget so much that you did all year long. But it's, it is what it is. It's the nature of our sport. Again, you're heading down to Little Rock, Arkansas on Friday to take on Wachita Baptist, and uh, a good event for a lot of reasons. One, uh, you know, Wachita Baptist, very good program. You've seen them already this year, a new program, but they put a lot into it, and very good. Two, the, the sport of wrestling is burgeoning in Arkansas, and I think a lot of that can be attributed to Roger Dinker, the Hall of Famer here at UCM, moved to Arkansas, his son coaches there. That's part of this event, so it's for a lot of reasons. It's really good to take the mules down to Arkansas to wrestle. Yeah, and they've in two years they put together quite a tough team. I mean, if you look at our rankings that just came out yesterday, I think they got three or four guys ranked in the top eight in their weight, and that's a lot to be said because they're all freshmen and sophomores, and they're going to be around. <laughs> um, but yeah, their coach Kevin Ward's done a heck of a job getting it ready, and it's and it's funny as we're hosting it in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's an hour from Wachita. That's actually the closest high school wrestling to the college, so it's a nice event. You know, it's to grow the sport, and they. The, the state itself has added a junior college, an NAI, and, and a Division II all within the last two years, and where they had no college wrestling. So it's, the sport's really growing, and uh, it'll be good. Coach Danker will, will be there. His son's team, uh, his son Kel's team, actually wrestles a dual meet right before our match at 6 o'clock. Um, so it'll be a good event to get to see him down there, and, and uh, hopefully he'll be, obviously he'll be supporting the Mules, not in any of those uh, <laughs> Arkansas teams. Spotlight so. in just a moment's on Willie Russell, 174 pounder, and I think just a, a great representative of our athletic department in Mules Wrestling. Great kid, great competitor. He's gotten better every year. Um, and again, just uh, one of those uh, young people you enjoy working with when you're in this profession. Yeah, I mean, I, I, with dealing with athletes, I've been around him for four or five years, so that's an always, it's not always pleasant, but uh, he's a great young man, a great individual. Um, in high school, he never even made it to the state tournament, and it's a real testament to kit to show the other guys, young guys, you know, like a tight ball to you, who's a freshman having having a tough time. Is you know, it took Willie just as long to win his first college match, and he stuck around. You know, we he got a red shirt in there, but he got better every year. He he works hard at it. He he you know, for the most part, does all the right things in and out of the room, and and um, he works real hard. He's He's involved in campus on numerous different activities. Um, been Mo? He's, yeah, <laughs> been Mo I'm really supposed to stop <laughs> and announce that. That's what, was, that, that was what I was hinting at. But yeah, and he's kind of somebody as you know, with a young group that, that you can look to him. You know, be a lot like him and work hard like him. And, and you know, if you stick stick it out and put you know work hard every day, eventually you'll get that success that, that you're looking for. Justin, thanks for the visit. Best of luck down the stretch. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Just a moment on Sports Page. As we mentioned, we'll get to know the Mules 174-pounder, Senior Willie Russell. We'll visit with the product from Springfield Kickapoo next here on KMOS-TV. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Watch Season to Season Outdoors starting in January only on KMOS TV. KMOS TV is a nonprofit organization owned and operated by the University of Central Missouri. The station relies upon many people, businesses, and organizations in order to provide programming services to thousands of people throughout Central Missouri. We can't do it alone. We need people to contribute as members, as corporate partners, and through major gifts and bequests, which can be arranged through a will. Public broadcasting faces many challenges in the years ahead as it competes in an increasingly cluttered media marketplace. But public television strives to be different. If this difference has been important to you, then I hope you'll consider a significant contribution to KMOS-TV 
through a major gift or bequest to keep KMOS TV and the entire public broadcasting system going strong. You can call KMOS TV to get more information on how you can make a contribution that will change lives for the better for decades to come. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. As a whole, the team, uh, well, right now, uh, we're in the mid-season mid grind uh, towards the end. Uh, we're all a little banged up. Uh, everybody's got bumps and bruises, got some guys with some injuries, going to have to sit, a little, sit, sit out a little bit. But, uh, you know, for the most part, um, I'm feeling good, uh, as, as good as you can feel halfway through season, beat up and, and banged up. But um, I'm feeling all right. We got to, you know, we are always... A close group of guys, and it's it's really nice to have. You know, we we always joke about a you know we're a tight team. We got teammate love. I feel like uh, you know we do. We have a you know I love our coaching staff. They you know they're willing to work with us, willing to get in there and grind with us at practice, wrestle with us, push us. Um, they're willing to you know coach Gillenwater. I'll do the workout with you. You know, he'll throw a 45-pound plate and plank out with us. You know, do planks with us in the weight room. Um, and so it is nice, you know, to have that, and uh, as well as you know, teammates looking out for each other. Um, uh, I'm pushing you. You're pushing me. Um, and that's kind of what we have to have. Uh, we have to have a teammate that will push you, uh, push you to the edge, and make you better. Some of my goals. Uh, are to, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, got a place at regionals. Um, I placed last year, placed six, which is top four go to nationals, and heartbreak. Uh, I was close, I was there, and I fell short. So this year, um, place at regionals again, uh, place top four. Got to be the top four, you know, then, it, then it's, uh, I want to be regional champ. I, I want to I win reg regionals, uh, and then it's, be a national qualifier, and then it's uh, I want to be now. I want to be a national champ. Uh, if you don't have in the back of your mind that you want to be a national champ, then why are you wrestling? Uh, you you have to want to be a national champ because otherwise you're wasting your time. You're not. What are you working for? I started wrestling in uh, in eighth grade, uh, seventh grade. Uh, I didn't make the uh, the A team, A B team in basketball. Uh, so eighth grade came around um, and I wanted to stay in shape for football and somebody said, hey, why don't you try this wrestling thing? I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. I, that sounds fun. And, you know, that'd be good for me to stay in shape and stay active. So I went out and, you know, started going to practices and I, I liked it. It was all right. And I uh, went to my first tournament. First kid I wrestled, dude was a stud. Just stuck me. I'm like, well, that was awful. Next match, I roll through. Again, kid beats me. Uh, third match, you know, 30 seconds in, I throw a headlock, I pin him, and ever since, I've loved wrestling. It's been my life. Um, you know, and a, a lot of that goes to my kids' club coaches, uh, who you know showed me everything about wrestling, the start, and, and I really attribute uh, Coach Pick. He's uh, he's now the central, he's at Central High School coaching wrestling and teaching math and I want to be a high school math teacher and wrestling coach. Uh, he chose to be in the inner city um, and I'd rather you know probably be more rural but I want to be coach pick. Uh, he showed me with wrestling I can better myself. Um, before that I I was you know oh, I'll probably graduate high school while I go to college probably not. Uh, after wrestling, I decided I'm going to college. I'm going to become a college wrestler. 
and that was a goal for me and I've achieved that goal uh, and to be a starter uh, I've achieved that goal uh, so now it's just like I said I want to be a national champ I've got to just achieve that goal um, you know and it's it's funny my name is uh, Willie Russell yes I will uh, I've been a wrestler my entire life but it didn't step on the mat until I was in eighth grade and that's when I found my true passion. I, I love this sport. Uh, to me, it's the greatest sport ever. When I was in seventh grade, me and my buddy made a pact that we were gonna ride our bikes to school every day. Uh, and my dad knew about it. Well, my, my mom and dad both knew about it, and one day it snowed. And my mom said, you're not riding your bike to school today. I said, no, me, me and Logan are gonna go ride our bikes to school today. And uh, my dad goes, no, let him go. He set a goal, let him do it. Don't, don't get in his way, don't stop him. Um, and, and they did and you know, we stuck to it. We rode our bikes every day. Rain, snow, sleet or hail. We rode our bikes to school and you know, it wasn't a big deal, but it was to us. Uh, and I think that's kind of where my parents have always been, the, the push. The senior from Springfield Kickapoo has a team leading 16 wins on the mats this season for the Mules. In just a moment, we'll tell you where all the Mules and Jennies are competing this weekend as Sports Page rolls on after this timeout. I choose to finish what I start. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose red to make my family proud. I choose red because I can take classes that work around my schedule. I choose red to advance my career. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree, advance your career, and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. The big thing with the KMOS Ready to Learn program isn't just, you know, come watch our shows, but then they want you to turn it off and read a book. My source for quality children's education is KMOS TV. Create. It inspires me. I love cooking with Ming. Oh, no, 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 no. Jacques Pepin is the man. I knew how to fix a furnace, but now I know the hot spots of Rio. I've turned shacks into castles, and now I can fill them with antiques. And I caught you watching that quilting show. And I'm getting pretty good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. And we, we love, love to, to watch Create. Create. It inspires us. To create with you. One final time this week, welcome back to the University of Central Missouri Sports Page. Before we put the finishing touches on this week's show, let's run down our upcoming schedule of events so you know where to follow the Mules and Jennies. And a couple of big basketball games coming up for the Mules and Jennies this week at home as Pitt State comes to town on Saturday to take on the Mules in a 3:30 contest. It's Mules Basketball Reunion Weekend as well. An alumni game will take place Saturday morning at 11 a.m. That's free and open to the public. Saturday's also Youth Day and Military Appreciation Day with all active and retired military personnel and their families admitted free with ID. Then next Wednesday, the Mules will host Emporia State in a 7.30 p.m. contest. Hope you can come out and watch the Mules. They are in first place in the MIAA. The Jennings basketball squad just like the Mules has won six straight games and the Gens will host 16th ranked Pitt State Saturday afternoon at 1.30 at the Multi again Youth Day and Military Appreciation Day. Another big challenge on Wednesday night as 17th ranked Emporia State comes to the Multi for a 5.30 p.m. contest. 
The Mules wrestling team heading down to Arkansas to take on Wachita Baptist on Friday night at 7. That match will take place in Little Rock. The UCM indoor track and field team will take part in the Missouri Southern Invitational this weekend down in Joplin. And it's time now for our weekly sports page trivia question. Each week we give you a chance to win a prize from UCM Athletics. And last week we asked you where will the 2012 MIAA basketball tournament be held? The correct answer is Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. It'll be March 1st through the 4th and it was announced today. The contract's been extended for the tournament to be held there at Municipal through 2014. Well, Dennis knew the correct answer. He was the first person to email us, so he wins a UCM t-shirt. This week, our question is, where did UCM co-head track and field coaches Kip Jandron and Kirk Peterson attend college? You can find that answer on our website, ucmo.edu forward slash athletics. To be entered to win the t-shirt, if you know the answer, send it to the address on your screen, or you can email it to sportspage at kmos.org. And with that, we put the finishing touches on the Central Missouri Sports page. As always, we hope you enjoyed the show. We invite you to tune in again each week, Thursday nights at 7 or Saturdays at 5, to keep up with the UCM Mules and Jennies. Again, visit our website, ucmo.edu forward slash athletics. Follow us on Twitter at UCM Mules and search for sports page and UCM Athletics on Facebook. Until next week, for our entire crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS, a broadcast service of the University of Central Missouri. Support for Sports Page is provided by Parker's Supermarket and Pharmacy in Warrensburg. Parker's works hard to supply grocery staples and spices to cook Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, and Thai cuisine. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience for everyone. By First Central Bank, full service banking from seven locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. First Central Bank, a residential mortgage lender, member FDIC. And by Union Station, Crossroads to Technology, a one-stop shopping source for technology needs, campus-compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus, on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads to Technology. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics.